The metaverse goes corporate. Striver, which creates virtual reality training simulations, hopes it can help retail and hospitality companies strike a balance between profitability, demands, employee training costs, and staff retention, despite a historically strong jobs market. Joining us with more, Derek Belch, Striver CEO. Derek, thanks so much for joining us. So for a lot of people, this concept may be new, a VR set for corporate training, uh, talk us through it for a second. I mean, give us an example of what this entails. Sure, basically, morning and S, thank you. Um, you know, long story short, virtual reality is uh, like a pilot going through a flight simulator. Um, you know, flight simulators have been used for a long, long time. They're very effective. They historically cost tens of millions of dollars. And to bring this to light, I always like to talk with a prop, right? Here you go, here's a, here's a VR headset right here. This thing costs a couple hundred dollars. You put it on your face and boom, you are in a virtual world. You're in a simulation that puts you in the shoes of what you would be doing, thinking, feeling in your everyday job, you know, from a janitor uh, to a CEO and everything in between. Um, that, that's basically the, the, the premise of what we're doing here. And so who are some of your clients? Who are the people who are interested in this kind of training right now? Yeah, so we're one of the, the bigger, uh, longer tenured startups in this space. We This is our ninth year in business. We started uh, actually in, in the NFL and college football training quarterbacks years ago, and then we pivoted to the enterprise six years ago, and, and we were very fortunate uh, that Walmart was our very first customer. Fortune One was our first customer, which is pretty rare. Um, and, and the years since, we've added Verizon, FedEx, Bank of America, Sprouts, Advent Health, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. We're, we're, we have a, a pretty good chunk of the Fortune 10 and Fortune 100 at this point. Um, we're, we're very fortunate. Uh, today we got the jobs report and the 311,000 jobs were added. Several sectors added jobs, a couple contracted. Are you seeing anything when it comes to your clients uh, as far as these companies are concerned? Which ones are the ones that are offering training? Which ones are the ones that are hiring? What sectors or what, what types of jobs are you seeing? Sure. So, you know, I, the, the, the sweet spot for us right now, and I think really VR as a whole, is really where the fr a frontline worker type is the end user. Um, obviously, I just listed a bunch of companies where that where that's that's a fit. Right. Um, I, I think the 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 operational use case is a very strong one. And there's kind of this spectrum of, of uh, decision making, um, situational awareness all the way to what I'm doing and with my hands in some sort of step by step process. Right. And then the long tail of all of this will be more of that knowledge worker, you know, kind of soft skills managerial use case. We're starting to see a bit of that, um, probably, you know, still a few years away. But, um, you know, that frontline worker is the end user is, is the really strong um, use case right now for the majority of our customers. And I'd imagine with some of this training, the companies can get data on what the actual person that's training doing. I mean, you can yes. sometimes you can check out during training, but not here. No one's ever fallen asleep in a headset, Inez. I mean, that, that, that's, the, the, that's the reality here, right? And, and even back to our, our sports days, right, when we were mainly working with quarterbacks, you know, most people don't know this, but, you know, even Tom Brady falls asleep in film sessions, right? I mean, it happens. And, and we've all been in those moments where we're just clicking through a PowerPoint or we're watching a video. We're not really paying attention. The information goes in one ear and out the other. So, so really the, the, the crux of what we're doing here is it's like attention and visualization on steroids, and then going back to that flight simulator metaphor, when the employee is in the headset, we get a pretty good idea of how they're going to think, feel, behave, act in the real world. I mean, it, it's not quite a one-to-one -one correlation, but it's pretty dang close. So as we think about the future of training and simulation and onboarding and maybe even hiring for that matter, getting a very realistic um, preview of how that employee is going to perform in the real world in an objective, unbiased manner, I mean, that's the holy grail that all these companies are looking for, right? So um, it is the holy grail. But I got to ask you, Derek, are they willing to pay for the holy grail? You know, we're in this environment yeah. where belt tightening is the name of the game. And I don't know how how much these programs and this hardware runs companies, but are, are you seeing any kind of um, chipping away at demand? Sure, sure. Uh, this must be a business show because this this <laughs> this is this is the, the the question, right? I mean, we're you know we're still in startup mode nine years later, but we're doing quite well. But yeah, I mean, Julie, you hit the nail on the head. Um, so far, yes, they they are, and and the ROI equations, candidly, are, are pretty simple. Um, most of it comes down to time time savings and therefore cost savings. You know, we've had a lot of customers 
literally show us their equations. Hey, my onboarding time used to be 12 weeks, used to be six weeks. I, I cut it in half, right? People are learning the same amount of information or more in a fraction of the time. So those ROI equations are, are pretty cut and dry from both a, a hard dollars and then a soft dollars perspective. As it relates to the cost that you reference, um, on the low end today, you can get a, a really awesome VR device for $500. On the high end, you know, maybe two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. Um, you know, we'll see what happens when Apple releases its device uh, in, in hopefully in a few months. That's been rumored to be a couple thousand dollars out of the gate, but we'll see. Um, then you got to build your content, right? So there, there are costs involved, but we're, we, we are in what I like to call the cheaper, lighter, faster era of virtual reality. Now, are we in the, the top of the second or the, the bottom of the sixth? You know, who knows? Probably more like the former. But um, th this is not as cost prohibitive as people would think, especially when you build a, a really tight ROI equation, with, which we've done with all of our customers. Interesting. Um, Derek, thank you so much. I hope you have a good weekend and you can add another uh, golf ball to your ball maybe playing this weekend. I'm, I'm going to Australia this weekend and there will be a few that go on that wall. So <laughs> nice. thank you, Julie. I nice. appreciate it. <laughs> Derek Belch, Driver CEO. Appreciate it.